What's going on guys, this is Mark from M3 Finish Mobile Detailing. Today we're gonna to walk you through the maintenance process and go from there. Get all the debris, all the loose debris out of it. So after we're done rinsing the car, a good tip is to always start from the top of the car, rinse it down, let all that debris fall off, and then after wash your sides. If you start with the sides first, and then the top, everything is on the top, is gonna to fall down, and you get a lot of scratches and debris. It's time to foam it, two ounces of pink soap, and then we put an ounce of solution in there just for more bite of the cleaning. All right, Mark, can you tell us how you got this customer into a maintenance program? I think it was back like a, a year to two years ago. Um, we, we did his car one time. He liked the way, how we detailed the car. From there, I was like, hey, just to let you know, we, got, we run a maintenance package. If you're interested, we give you a discount. For this guy, he's pretty clean, so we offered him a discount. This one runs around $60 just for a maintenance wash. Super, super clean, super easy. And yeah, man, ever since then, he never looked back. Now, when you detail new customers, do all of them jump on the maintenance program or do you kind of got to persuade them to it? They don't necessarily jump onto it, but you just give them a, you just let them know, notify them like, hey, we offer a maintenance program. Sometimes people do do it. Like, oh yeah, let's, let's hop on it. And sometimes people don't. But uh, the people that do um, hop on it, they're more meticulous and they're, they want their car clean every week or bi-weekly. It's easy maintenance, it's consistent for the cash flow. So right now we're doing the bumper getting rid of all the, the bugs in front of the car. This particular part gets all the bugs and all the debris. Now, Mark, you mentioned this car is pretty clean. Yeah. You do it weekly, bi-weekly? Uh, this one, uh, every three weeks. Now, what if a maintenance client's car was super dirty? What if you took it off roading or what if the kids made a mess back there? How do you handle that situation? So we discharge them more. I feel like if it takes more time, that's the whole point of the maintenance clients is that they mean it's a car and if they go off-roading or they're yeah this look like they had a party in the back we just charge more just let them know hey this time is dirty we just got to charge you a different price just because of the condition also to keep in mind you got to make money and if I'm staying in there for like two hours three hours and you're making like 50 bucks might as well just go work a nine-to-five you know and how do you communicate that with the customer? Do you be like, hey, Juan, just want to let you know it's a little dirty. I'm going to charge you an extra 25. Yeah, yeah. You know? I just, uh, right when I get there and I see the car, I look at it, observe it, I'm like, hey. And then I just text them, like, hey, this is a little dirtier than expected. Uh, we're going to have to charge you a little bit more. But uh, just let you know, is that okay? And sometimes it's like, most of the time, like 95% say, oh, no worries. Yeah, yeah. But maybe you get that one guy that's like, oh, no, it's okay. Like, it's fine. It's really rare, but it might happen. Like it's fine, don't detail it, or it's fine, just do the basics? Like don't detail it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just waste the time, but it's rare. Because you already, you already build a uh, relationship with the customer, and you've known them for a while, they'll look out, you know? All right, so now we're done with the agitation process. Now it's time to rinse it down. Get all that scope off the surface. So we just finished the rinsing process. Now we're gonna hit the wheels. I know there's a big debate right now. People ask a lot of my detailer uh, buddies, what do you do first, the wheels or the exterior? For me, I do the exterior first just because it gives more time for the water to fall down so you don't have to blow as much. For the wheels, I, I did both before. I did the wheels and then the, the exterior. But I, I like this method way better just because it takes less time to dry the car. So right now we're using Wise Guy from Shine Supply. We hit the tire, we hit the rim and the barrel. So right now I'm gonna agitate the face. Got my wheel willy to hit the, the barrel of the rim. Come through and hit the tire. Inside, what I like to do is got solution one to one. I like to spray in the wheel wells for the plastics. I see a lot of people, they, when they detail, they leave the wheel well alone. And then when you wash the car, it looks good. But when you look in the wheel well, there's a bunch of dirt. So I just like to clean that to give a better appearance. How much time do you try to spend on the wheel? Um, it doesn't take us that long, but it just depends. There's some clients that we take that are brand new and they're inside of the wheels is really really kicked on because they take it to the car washes and man that sometimes that it could take two to three minutes just for the wheel but if you have the right chemicals 
in the right technique, you get through the wheel pretty fast. I know some guys, they, they do take a little longer on the wheel. Well, I'd like to know for all the other detailers out there, how long do you guys spend on the wheel? Like I said, I spend anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute per wheel, but drop it in the comments down to see what the what time is. For our maintenance clients, usually we use Wise Guy, either one to one or three to one. Uh, that would be our ideal kind of wheel maintenance. But uh, we know we have some cars that are really bad, like an AMG 63 that shoots a lot of brake dust. We're probably gonna use an acidic cleaner for that. But ideally, for all our maintenance clients, we just use a, a degreaser. So Mark, I noticed you dilute a lot of your products. Yeah. Why is that? But still the recommended dilution ratio. You don't want to like, say for instance, wise guy, you don't want to use a straight. Just because say for instance, if you do use a straight, there might be some staining that could be caused. And also keep in mind, we're doing this for a business. So we want to save money by diluting it as well. So if, if this doesn't, this wheel doesn't need a one to one, go to three to one to save some money. Cause a gallon's $40. And uh, obviously you gotta make the product stretch for more money. So okay. I always recommend to people dilute the product. All right, as we mentioned in the video, we do dilute our products, but I'd like to know if you guys dilute your products. Um, drop it in the comments and go from there. All right, Mark, now we're jumping on the inside. Yeah, so now we got the whole vehicle dried off. So the second thing we do after drying off the vehicle is hit the door jams, get all that dirt, all that film out of the door jams. And then after that, we're gonna hop into the inside. All right, Mark, so what's the game plan for the inside? Yeah, so right now we're gonna remove the floor mats. I like to remove them out of the car. For me personally, I wouldn't vacuum them. It takes way longer to vacuum them. So what I do, I just remove them, put them right here. I have solution, dilute it one-to-one. -one. What I do, I just uh, spray the, the floor mats. The cool thing about this product, it has emulsifiers in it, so it just lifts up the dirt. So I don't have to necessarily scrub the, the mat. I just spray it on there, let it sit for a few, and just pressure wash it, and it's good to go. I know some detailers, they, they scrub the, the mats, but if you have the right chemical, you don't have to do that, you save some time. So Mark, how do you feel about Teslas? Teslas, I personally like them. I own a Tesla, so I know there's a lot of like people that say, ah, Tesla's whack. Tesla, you gotta charge the car. Me personally, I love the car. I don't have time to do maintenance uh, on the vehicle. So like, I don't have time to do oil changes. I don't got time to do none of that. So this is basically a maintenance free kind of thing. All you gotta do is worry about the brakes, the wheels, the windshield fluid, and the battery. That's about it. So yeah, I think they're solid. And, and, for us detailers, people with Teslas, they like to take care of them, so it's good for us at the same time. A good tip is to move the seat forward, all the way forward. I don't like to work backwards, so what I do is, when I'm moving the seat, I'm vacuuming at the same time, and they come through. Vacuum this side down. This was not bad, so it doesn't require a lot of time. I don't have to move it forward again when I wipe down. So, this saves a little bit of time. Cool, so after that process, after vacuuming, we're gonna do a wipe down. After the wipe down, we're gonna hit the glass, close the doors, shine the tires, detail spray the outside. Should be good to go. That'll be our maintenance detail, our maintenance package. When you're done, do you call a customer out? Yeah, yeah, so usually I text them, like let them know, hey, I'm done. You can come check the vehicle out. For us detailers, we always beef it with the gardeners. They always, <laughs> they always make the, the, you know, all the debris fly through the, the car. Towels right here, so this towel, I'll use for the floor mats, and this towel for the top, so. What I'll do is wipe it down. This one wasn't really stepped on, so that's the reason why I didn't take it out. Just wiping it down. So right now we're using O and R just to wipe everything down. The interior detailer. So I think there's another good tip right there. Isn't O and R for exterior? It's kind of like a 
5-in-1 product, I think, I would say. It's, uh, it's good for a clay lube, uh, detailing spray, uh, interior detailer, waterless wash. I don't personally use it, but you can use it for glass as well. So, yeah, that product is pretty cool. I like hey, it a lot. Saving you a lot of money, man. Yeah, it saves a lot of money. I want to know what you guys use for the insides. I know some people use mm, leather and surface cleaner from Shine Supply. For me personally, it's on the expensive side. I'll only use it if it's for details, but it runs $45 a gallon. I know you could dilute it as well, but O&R, you can dilute it 10 to 1, uh, 3 to 1, and this thing usually handles all the maintenance issues. That's another thing too as well. Detailers like to, they like to do more than what they get paid for. For instance, I have a, a buddy in, a, in a San Francisco, he uses like express uh, interior detailer instead of like, a, instead of just an interior detailer, the express is going to clean the interior better. You do want it for your client, you want the best for your client, but as well, like you're going to be wasting more money, more time, and you're never going to make any more money just because you're detailing the client's car, but charging them for a car wash, it doesn't make sense. So that's the thing too, you have to know how to go about it. So next thing we're gonna do is hit the, the glass with some glass cleaner. Right now we're using Shine Supply Sunshine, diluted three to one with the waffle weave towel. Uh, I know some people use the, the microfiber towels for the windows, but for me, there's, it leaves a lot of uh, lint behind. So I just use these waffle towels. So I'll use two towels. We'll do the two towel method. All right, so I'll walk you through the glass cleaning process. So this is my wet towel, I and mean, then this is my dry towel. What I'll do, I spray the glass cleaner. A fair amount missed it, but not too crazy. Fold my towels into fours. What I like to do is smear the product all over the place, and we're gonna scrub it. And then we'll come through, buff it out, make sure to get all that residue behind if there's any or any smear marks. Flip it over, and should be good to go. And I'm pretty sure if you follow this process, you'll probably have no streaks in your windows. So if I, I know if, when you get a little bit better, you can start using one towel, but this method will be easier for you guys to do. So always keep that dry towel. So the reason why you want a dry towel is to remove any streaks on the, on the surface. So your first towel will be your buff towel or your, your wet towel, and you come through and buff it after. Flip it over, super clean. I'll do the outside last because you can get this, you mm. get the, the water. So I like to do half of the inside first, shut it, do the exterior half, and then move, move on. Cleaning the, the Tesla's dashes, what you'll do, you go to your uh, the car right here. You tap the car, you go to uh, service. So service, and say for instance, you're gonna wash the car and you always having to keep locking, you can go to car wash mode and it's always gonna keep it unlocked. And then for, uh, if you wanna clean the LED screen or, or the display screen, you go to display and hit uh, clean screening mode and you can clean the glass. Sometimes like if you don't do that, the screen starts spazzing out and you have to, re how to restart it, what I'll do is hold the buttons right here. You hold it for like 15 to 20 seconds and it, it just reboots the whole car if you run into that issue. I'm gonna wipe this down, flip it over, buff it out. There it go. The trickiest thing is doing the windshields for me um, and for other people in direct heat or direct sunlight, everything's gonna dry faster, so you gotta work quicker. What I do is spray it, come through, smear it. I do half the windshield and then you see all those wet marks come through with my dry towel, buff it out, flip it over again buff it out as well so there's some streaking right here that you see and for me this is like the famous edge so when it, no matter what i can go like this you'll still see that streak at the end what i do i like to just grab my towel come through and go like this and in the sunlight you'll see what i'm talking about so i like to just smear it around move the glass cleaner and clean buff it out so you don't get that streak come down to your other initial wipe down and when you guys follow this process, I'm pretty sure 99% you'll get a smear-free window. A good tip also when you clean the glass, like for instance, obviously not this car, but I would say 
for like an SUV, like a RAV4 or something. They have like the back windows right here. I'll do that back when the last because all of the water will start dripping underneath this, the little uh, strip right there, start dripping water. So leave that last and then hit everything else. So by the time all that water dripped down, you don't have to worry about that when you leave. I'd like to know guys, if you guys use two towels, one towel, no towels. And also what do you guys use for your glass cleaner? I spoke with other detailers. Some people just use water. So for me personally, it doesn't work for me. Just, I like to shine supply uh, sunshine, but drop it in the comments. So now after we're done with the, the windows, we got the whole inside dialed in. What I'll do is spray this tire shine. You will notice me using different brushes for uh, different tires. I like this brush because it's pretty, this brush kind of like, is like the same size, so I'll use this, but there, there's another brush I use called the Boar's Brush. That'll be for other, uh, other tires as well. Oh, another tip too. Uh, I see people going like this, like, but standing up, and then it gets all the overspray on the window. So if you do spray tire shine, kind of spray down and then apply it. So you don't get that overspray on the windows or on the paint. That's like the one thing I hate a lot. I see other people using like the air compressor, but then all the, the overspray gets on the vehicle. And for me, I don't have time for that. It takes, it looks like it takes more work to do it that way. So I'd rather stick to the traditional way and just applying tire shine like this. And this one we're using a uh, fiber dressing one-to-one -one dilution ratio. Super glossy. A lot of people use water-based dressing or they use oil. I like to stick with water-based dressings because it, it, it uh, deteriorates quicker and you don't have to worry about the grime from the oils. See what people do like the armor on stuff, they'll start seeing build up and build up and build up and build up. It's harder to clean. So. For me, I stick to the water-based dressing, especially doing this for a living. You wanna make your job easier, not harder. And if you do drop a towel on the floor, don't use it on the car. Just either put it away or just throw it away. No five second rule, Mark? No, no, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Like if you do pick up a rock, that five seconds of me just throwing a towel and getting a new one, you could have created more damage on the surface. It takes you either more time or sometimes it's not fixable, so rather than it's not chance it. This is right here in the spray elixir. I like to use it. Yeah, I feel like it's better for like cooked on bugs and stuff. I'll do the spray a little bit, kind of work it in there. Kind of get all that. So sometimes they do stick on there and there's nothing you can do about it. You also have to have re realistic expectations. You can't take off everything, you know? So keep that in mind as well. Don't try to stay here forever trying to take something that's been cooked on. Hey Mark, how do you feel about air fresheners? Uh, I personally don't use them. Um, a lot of my clients don't like them for some reason. I remember, <laughs> I remember I bought a whole line of air fresheners. I was like, yeah, ready to use that. And no one, I was like, you want an air freshener? They're like, no. And I was like, ah. Oh. And so what I did, my I let my like after a while, no one's asking for them. I was like, all right, well, I let my son just like have some. You know, he threw it in our car. Other than that, we didn't really use them. But some people. Well, my demographic, my clients, they don't really like air fresheners. So for me, I would like to put them in there, but people don't like them. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Today, we wrapped up on the maintenance detail on this uh, Tesla Model Y. You've seen us do the wheels, uh, the exterior, the windows, the vacuuming, the wipe down, what products I use. And if you have any other tips, drop them down in the comments below. And other than that, man, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, follow us for more content. Thank you.